had a chance to look at Boyle's Law? Do you know what you're doing? At least do you know the safety concern? Well, Boyle's Law, not this particular experiment. What are we going to do? We're going to trap gas inside a syringe. Right? Then we're going to put the syringe in a pressure vessel so that we can add extra pressure to the outside of the syringe and compress the gas. Right? So Boyle's Law, we're working. We're working with this law. Right? Pressure times volume is a constant value. So if we increase the pressure, the volume should go down. Uh, let's see. We didn't talk about this one yet, did we? No. No, we didn't. Okay. So why don't I... We'll do a little preliminary then. Just have to find it. Here it is. All right. Uh, well, in that case, let's change this. You know, which lab is this? This is seven. Lab number seven. Boyle's Law. We could do experiments with any of the other laws. And I've got one for Charles' law. It's a little more difficult to handle because you're measuring volume change with temperature. This one is the is the simplest one to do. All right, so uh, that preliminary stuff talks is background. Let's look at pre-lab questions. How about that? Pre-lab number one. According to our modern understanding of gas laws, there are four measurable properties of, of a gas. These variables are pressure, volume, temperature, and moles, right? I put that on the board when we first talked. Pressure, volume, temperature, and moles. In Boyle's law, which two of the variables are held constant? Right? If you allow pressure and volume to vary, those are your variables, then you have to have the other two must be constant. Temperature and moles, right? Temperature and moles. How about two? Fill in the blanks to summarize the relationship among gas properties in Boyle's experiment. For, and this is another way of saying one, actually. For a fixed blank of gas at constant blank, what did we just say? For a fixed number of moles, at constant temperature, the pressure of the gas increases as the volume decreases, right? That's the law. Whenever you have a product of two variables equal to a constant, they are inversely proportional. As one goes up, the other has to go down in order to maintain that constant. Okay, how about three? Uh, pressure is defined in physics as force divided by area. Pressure equals force divided by area, right? According to the kinetic molecular theory, the particles in a gas are constantly moving and colliding with the walls of their container. Yeah, I'll agree with that. The pressure of the gas is related to the total force exerted by the individual collisions. Use the kinetic theory to explain the results of Boyle's law. All right, I like to draw pictures. All right, if we start out with a piston here, uh, we have moles and temperature fixed. We have a given pressure, right? A pressure here, which is equal to force times area. And then we have a volume here. Okay, and you got all these particles in there bouncing off the walls and bouncing off that piston. Okay, so how do we explain Boyle's law in the, with the kinetic molecular theory? What if we increase the pressure, right? Increase the pressure. If this is a fixed area, 
right? You're increasing the pressure by increasing the force, right? Just increase the force on that piston, right? And it goes down to a certain point, it stops. Why does it stop? Sorry. Right, because right because the the opposing force is equal to the outside force. Right? Okay, that's the first step. You know that they're equal now. Once that piston stops at this position, then the outside force and the inside force are equal because the area is constant. Okay. And with the kinetic molecular theory, how do we get force? We know how we got force on the outside, or how we just put a weight on it. But how about inside? How do you get more force inside? If the temperature is constant, the kinetic energy of all the molecules is, is the average is the same, right? This did not change. And the mass didn't change either. Well, you've got particles moving, still moving, right? But how many impacts are you getting? You're increasing the number of impacts, right? You got the same number of molecules all moving at, with the same kinetic energy, but now they're banging against smaller area. We've decreased the area, right? We've decreased the, the, the total area, so the number of impacts is increasing against that piston. All right, put that in your own words, of course. All right, so that was number three. And let's see, we have a four. Yeah, we have a four. Uh, the pressure scale on the tire gauge is marked in units of pounds per square inch. All right. You ever checked your own tire pressure? Okay. PSI with one of those with a thing that sticks out when you push it on there. All right. We're not going to use that one. I mean, I still got them there, but I've graduated to an electronic uh, measure. That way, because those um, manual ones, they only have a certain range. So we had, we, initially, when I put this experiment together, we had to use three different ones with different ranges to cover the whole range of pressures that we were investigating. So now with this electronic, uh, it'll measure the pressure um, with just one device. Okay, so uh, measure in PSI, this means that the total pressure is equal to the gauge pressure plus the pressure of the surrounding air. So if you have a tire and you measure the pressure, there's an internal pressure uh, the gauge pressure that you measure, and then there's more pressure on that tire actually because you have atmospheric pressure. Okay, uh, reading on standard atmospheric pressure is one atmosphere of 14.7 psi. One atmosphere is 14.7 psi. Okay. Assume that you have just inflated your tire on your bicycle to 82 PSI using a bicycle pump. What's the total pressure of air in the tire in PSI and in atmospheres? Okay. The total pressure, uh, let's put it this way. Total pressure is equal to the gauge pressure that you measured plus atmospheric pressure, okay? It's kind of small. It. <laughs> the gauge pressure you measured was uh, 82, 82 PSI. And what's the atmospheric pressure? Well, we're assuming one atmosphere, so 14.7. So if we add those two together, we get uh, 96.7 PSI, okay? 
and then or you could round it off to two. Let's see, since we uh, round this is addition, so we have remember the rules 14.7, 96.7, but we are stuck with that one, so we have to round it off to 97. Okay. Uh, significant figures. And then we want to convert uh, that PSI, 97 PSI, we need a conversion factor. We want to convert it to atmospheres, right? 14.7 uh, PSI per atmosphere. So 14.7 into 97 gives you um, two significant figures, right? This limits the number of significant figures, not that. This is an exact number. So that would be 6.6 .6 atmospheres. You know, plug it into your calculator and see. Should be. Now, why is a pre-lab doing this type of calculation? Because we're gonna measure, we're gonna measure gauge pressure that is inside the container, but the total pressure, you have to add atmospheric pressure. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna measure the atmospheric pressure and put it on the board for you. And you're gonna measure gauge pressure and the volume of the gas that responds to each one of those pressure measurements. So what's the total pressure? It's your gauge pressure plus atmospheric, but they have to be in the same units. So we're gonna convert the measured PSI and gauge pressure to atmospheres using this method. And then we're gonna convert the barometric pressure, which will probably be in uh, millimeters of mercury and convert that into atmospheres. Then you can add them together. Okay. I'm gonna put that on the board so I can record your, your stuff and take a picture of it. So it'll, uh, it should look something like the uh, this table. And we're only going to do one. And we've got room to do two determinations, right? two experiments. We're only going to do one experiment. So that means uh, one experiment is worth 106 points. One rep. If we did two reps, it'd be worth 151 points, but we're only going to do one. Uh, let's see. Yeah, that's it. Uh, did we have any other discussion questions or they're just post lab questions? I think they're post lab questions. Um, when we get some numbers, I'll talk about these calculations that are in that table. All right? We've we've talked about gauge pressure, uh, volume in the syringe total pressure, how to get those. Then when we get some numbers, we'll talk about the uh, one over V, which is the reciprocal, right? And P times V, which is actually Boyle's law expression, pressure, total pressure times volume. And how to get the, what does this mean? In statistics, that means the average of, average of all the P times Bs. And then the, the last column is uh, calculation of deviations. So let's get some numbers and then we can work through the rest of them. Uh, let's see, post lab questions. Uh, many of the post lab questions um, require calculations in that table. So you really don't have to do anything there. But there are two graphs that you're going to do draw. You're going to take your raw data, well, actually your total pressure and volume, and you're going to draw a um, yeah pressure times volume. You're going to draw a curve for that. And in order to do that correctly, you need to identify what's the pressure. It's in atmospheres. Volume is in milliliters. And you need a title. Right? Students always forget the title. And then you plot your data points and then a best fit curve. 
And then you have to mark it off here in units. I identify your units. And that would be the pressure times volume. And then you do the same thing for the one over V, right? Instead of V here, you have one over V and plot that data and you should get a straight line. Uh, okay, so rather than steal the rest of your time talking, uh, let's, uh, let me show you the experiment. All right, what we've got is our pressure vessel, two liter bottle. We only use them one time. I tried using them multiple times, but after about uh, 10 inflation, deflation, um, they get weak right up here. They had one blow up on them. It just, how does that sound like a gun? There are people running up and down the hall thinking it was an active shooter. <clears throat> But we'll use it one at most two times if you have to repressurize and do it again. <clears throat> and then after you're finished with it, it's time to cut it up. That eliminates that problem. So um, we trap, we lubricate. This is a special syringe I bought for feeding small animals. Uh, like if you have a squirrel that fell out of a tree or something, you're rehabilitating feeding this food like this. But the nice thing about it is the gasket on it, this black thing is very small, so it doesn't drag. But a hospital syringe got those huge black things on them, and they won't move. So, but you still need to put a little bit of uh, petroleum jelly on it. Actually, there's still some down here. Wipe it right with that. And then you put it in the syringe, and be sure it moves okay. And then you pull it out to uh, 10 milliliters. Okay. So we've got air inside here. We're trapping the number of moles of air in there. If we take this cork that's only been drilled out halfway and seal it in, now we've got uh, a fixed number of moles. And then uh, the, the experiment doesn't take very much time, so the temperature is going to be fairly high. And then you drop it in here like this. I had to trim off the, the flange here so it'll fit. And then put your valve on. This is how we introduce more air and increase the pressure. Make sure it's nice and solid. There you go. And then I've got a uh, an electric pump here. I bought for pump up my own tires and we'll pressurize it. And as we pressurize it, you'll see the, the syringe move. We get it down to about one and a half, one or one and a half milliliters. I think your method says what 60 psi, something in the neighborhood of 60. And then we start collecting our data. We do it from high pressure down to low pressure rather than low pressure to high pressure. So you've got this pressurized, and then you measure, I push this button right here, it turns it on, and it's already set on PSI. And then you know how to measure your pressure, stabilize your uh, valve, and then come in at right angles here, be sure it's level. And then Press it down like that. You hear a little bit of maybe, but you should get rid of it. Then, then that helps us move the syringe. Get steady friction. Then you read volume. Why do you read the volume after? You? Because of that. You let us bear out. Do not change the bottle side. You let it, you let off the pressure. You measure the pressure, but at the same time you let air out. So that pressure is represented now of what's inside the vessel. So you don't measure the volume and then the pressure. Pressure the volume. Because lots of times students will go in there like this, going, shh, shh, shh. finally get a pressure. <laughs> 
because uh, I think those students have never taken the pressure off their, their car tires or the bicycle tires ever. They don't know how to, to use a tire gauge. It has to be perpendicular. Yeah. It should only take one push, but it has to be turned, of course. It automatically shuts off if you don't. So be sure it's turned on first. <laughs> okay. And you get a, a pressure, a first pressure at the highest level in the body. And then you'll need to let some pressure out. So you need something to, to let the tire out of your, your neighbor's car tire. So use something like this, press the valve, let some air out, and watch this and see if that moves. It needs to move some. But if you get about 10 measurements, uh, sequentially just keep doing that, let air out, and measure it, and check it and read it again. And that's going to be your data set. You're going to have a whole list, just like in that chart. Gauge pressure volume, gauge pressure volume. High to low. Okay. All right. <clears throat> now, when you get down to where this won't register a pressure anymore, it's time to measure zero pressure, zero gauge pressure. So, how do you do that? Well, you be sure of the, you know, uh, let all the air pressure out and then take the cap off. Make sure it's stable. And then Reading. That's zero gauge pressure with this open. There is pressure on it though, atmospheric pressure. So it'd be zero plus whatever your atmospheric pressure would be your final reading. Okay. Uh, that's it. That's all the data you need to gather. Really simple. Sir. But, so, um, yeah. Where it says you just Oh, no, I'm, I got a barometer in my phone. So I'll write it on the board. Uh, oh, um, who needs a, uh, an apron? Just one phone. And uh, eye protection, if I got eye protection. Okay. <clears throat> you, you need to, okay. <laughs> yeah, because if if I uh, if my if one of these um I should have air yeah, I was gonna say it's already yeah. um yeah, you need to connect your eyes in case in case the vessel is blowing. It shouldn't explode, but you know, well, Murphy's Law, right? Okay, let me get this out of the way. We're ready to ready to move along. That's easier than a tire pump. I used to use tire uh, bicycle pumps. In the beginning, it was okay, but once you get up to that higher pressure. Boy, it takes the muscle. So I decided just to buy the device. I used to have one that was smaller than this, but it crapped out on me. So I forked over a little more money and got a better job. Okay. So you want to do it all yourself? Let's see. In case you need some more. Oh, you Fixed number of moles. Yep. 
hard part was drilling the holes in those gaps. But you can buy these valve stems at Walmart. Getting a uniform, getting a uniform hole in those gaps is, is challenging. Good height. All right. Now we need to pressurize it. Okay, let's hook it up. You know how these things work? This one's never worked. Right, we've got a, a, a rough gauge here. Right, so we'll go up to it. Right. So I don't have to get close to that to do this button. I'll just unplug it. At the moment, you see the pressure going right like here. Any file? That's scary. <laughs> These bottles are uh, are supposed to be good up to a hundred psi. Or at least for the first time. I don't know what to do. Probably a uh, source of experimental error. The temperature is not high. Okay, so first thing you want to do is have your first pressure. Okay, turn it on. See if it's trying to call me. Is it supposed to like keep it on there or not? Constantly show the PSI like how it is with this? I think so. Okay. I do that one for you. Great. Fine. Fine. Be sure and uh, I would pick right, this side of the black. Where is that black sitting? Right on the tip. So 1.95 <laughs> I wouldn't split hairs that much. Maybe 1.9. 1 1.9 at 53.5. So let me let me put my chart up here so I can track the data. Oh, you need something to let the air out. Do you have anything to compress the valve? I have a pencil I can try it. Okay. Did the volume change? Yes. It did change. Okay, that's good. All right. So here's a table.
Yeah, you had uh, 53.5 was the first one, right? It, yes. And that was 1.9 millimeter. How about the second one? 46.2 PSI. Okay. And then 2.1. Okay. Is that your third reading? Yeah. 30. 1.1. 30. I need my glasses. It's just a one. I think that's what. What was it? Okay. What was the pressure? Twenty-two point eight. Okay. Sixteen. Okay. <laughs> what? I said four things and four. Four, it was four what? <laughs> four point two. Four point giggle? Four point two. Six. Two. Two. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> 11.9? Nine. 1.9? 9.9. 9.9. I'm writing my time. <laughs> Speech problem. <laughs> I would say 5.2 because it's probably on the same thing. Yeah. 5.2. All right. Yeah. 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 Five okay. You know, this is good because Sierra's there. She's sick today, but she's watching and she can see the data. Uh, 6.2. 6.2. Okay. Three, three. Three point zero. Three point zero. Three point zero. Seven point one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, it's zero. What is it? Zero. 
Oh, zero pressure? Yeah. Okay, it's time to pull the cap off. <laughs> it should be okay. Yeah, there was a little pressure, but the gauge wouldn't measure it. So now shake it around and, and, and get a volume. This would be... Time for one. Volume? Yeah. Did you say 9.1? Yeah. Okay. That's okay because the way the, the uh, plunger sticks, it never makes it back to 10. Okay, so there's our data set. I need to get you the barometric pressure. Hold on a second. Uh, let's see. Should be right here. Seven forty three point eight. That's millimeters of mercury. Hey, remember how to convert mercury to uh, millimeters of mercury to atmospheres? Uh, your conversion factor takes millimeters of mercury, converts to atmospheres. One atmosphere is 760. So you divide 760 into that, and that gives you that barometric pressure or the pressure from the atmosphere. So, so page uh -huh. uh, It's 0.9786. Uh, we can have four. 9786? Yeah. Atmospheres. Okay. That's the value. Well, we have to convert each one of these to uh, atmospheres. Uh, I didn't leave enough room for it, did I? Okay. Well. Would we put that at? Um, there's no place for it. Oh, okay. Yeah. You have to convert this to atmospheres. And I would, since it's on the far left of your graph, I just put it out to the left. So for the bar barometric pressure of top, do you want us to use the 0 0.9786? Atmospheres, yes. Because you're going to convert this to atmospheres also. Well, no, put the put that value and then put this as the converted value. Um, I just drew a line through it, but you can still tell that it's 7. Okay. Uh, so can I just... Yeah, you can leave it that way. Equal zero point nine. Zero point nine seven eight six. And then we convert this to let's see. I'm gonna have to make room here. This is simply the conversion of PSI to atmospheres. So you would take, for instance, 53.5 PSI and use your conversion factor, 14.7, and that's one atmosphere. So 14.7 divided into 53.5 will be your uh, pressure, gauge pressure in atmospheres. So we do 14.7. Yeah, divide this into each one of those gives you a new number in the atmospheres. So would the first one be um, 0 0.27 or so? No, if you divide 50 by 14, it's going to be uh, it's going to be greater than one. You probably divide them backwards. Yeah. So, so that's the total pressure. No. That's just no, the, we have to uh, convert this. Yes, 
and then add the um, zero point yeah. um, seven x. Add that one to each one, each one of these. What's this uh, one? That was three point six three nine four. Uh, that's good enough. Okay. Do y'all know how to use Excel spreadsheet? Kind of. Kind of. Because you can put these values into a spreadsheet and say equals a formula, right? And then just grab that little thing down in the corner and drag it down, and it'll do all the calculations for you. <laughs> or you can do them by hand. I don't have my computer with me. <laughs> <laughs> the one night I'll bring it. Okay. The next one is 3.142. Okay. You know what you can do? Since you've already got it in your calculator, once you calculate this one, just add that one to it and then put it over here. Okay. So 3.639 plus 0976 would be 4.6176. 618, right? Because we've only got three decimals here. We got four there, but we only got three here, so we can only keep. And three point one four two plus one point eight six is um four point one two zero six. So two. Yeah, 4.12. Uh-huh. Okay. The 3.1, it would be 2.115. Okay. And that would be... 3.094. would be 1.551. Now, do you trust your partner to give you the right numbers? <laughs> huh? Your partner's doing all these calculations for you. Do you trust her? I'm watching the calculator. Okay, good deal. <laughs> and then that would be 2.529. The 16.4 would be 1.115. Okay. That would be 2.094. Okay. The 9.9 would be 0 0.673. And the total would be 1.652. Okay. 5.6 would be uh, 0 0.381. And then the total would be 1.359. Okay. For the 3.0 would be 0 0.204. Oh, yes, 1.183. Okay. 
and this would just be zero, right? Zero divided by 14 is zero. So then the total would be 0 0.976. Uh -huh. Nine seven nine actually. And this is atmospheres. Total pressure. Okay. So your first graph that you plot is going to be pressure on the x-axis, volume on the y-axis with this data set. And the second data set would be pressure on the x-axis and <clears throat> 1 over V on the y-axis. So what you have to do is take the reciprocal of each one of these. Either say 1 divided by that. Or if your calculator has a reciprocal key, it'll say x to the minus 1, or it'll say 1 over x, then you can do that calculation. Okay? You can do that at your leisure if you'd like. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? You, you don't know about reciprocals? Reciprocal is just 1 divided by the number. So, so you would take 1 divided by 1.9. Uh-huh. And that would be milliliters to the minus 1. Right? Everything you do to the number, you got to do to the units. So the unit of measure is the reciprocal of milliliters. Let me see, are you using your phone? Oh, it may not have a reciprocal key on it then. That's your reciprocal key. So how about just punch in your number and get that key? So what was that, your second one? 0 0.476 and 3. You got the next one also? 0 0.344. Okay. Um, you just put this number in, the root table in, file nine, or Two point five two nine, and then you just hit the. No, no, no. 2.529 is pressure. Oh, okay. Yeah, wrong <laughs> You want volume. The 3.5. And then you just hit the one that So is this one right? Yes. That should be right because that's about three, and this is about a third. All right, one over three is a third. So what was the 3.5? 0 0.286. Okay. This ought to be about 25 something. 0 0.238. Oh, 238. Uh, yeah, because it's got a 0 0.2 there. How about this one? 0 0.192. Okay. Six point two is zero point one six one. Okay. Seven point one is zero point one four one. Okay. <clears throat> nine point one is zero point one zero nine. Okay. So the second graph you're gonna you're gonna uh, plot is the uh, these values on the x-axis and these values on the y-axis. So the x-axis would be the total ATM? Right. And the y-axis is the 
In the first graph, we would just plot the volume right. uh, as the um, x-axis. The y-axis. The y. Right. The x-axis is what did you change? As the experimenter, you changed the pressure. That's x-axis. So, Now we times the total pressure ATMs times the milliliters that we just did. Right. These two. These two goes in this space. Spreadsheet would be a lot easier. So the second column times the fourth column? One. Well, let me see. Uh, second column in, yeah, there would be that one, and then yeah, not counting the column that we made. Right, you had an extra one out here. Yeah. So it would be uh, this column, volume of the air, times the total pressure. All right, this is total here. Total pressure times volume will give you a value here. So 1.9 times 4.618. Right. Okay. 8.774. Okay. And the units of measure here are uh, milliliter atmospheres. Right? Because you got milliliters times atmospheres. So, second one. Eight, six, five. Six, five, what? Four. Okay. They're very similar, aren't they? I got eight point nine seven two. Okay. Eight point nine seven two. Okay. The three point five one will be eight point eight five two. Okay. Eight point seven nine five. Um on the zero, on the eight point nine seven two one, it is eight point nine seven three because of our five what number is. Okay. On um, five point two, it is eight point five nine zero. On six point two, it's eight point four two six. Okay. On seven point one, it is eight point three nine nine. Okay. And then the last one is eight point nine zero nine. Okay. So that fits with. Pressure times volume is a constant. Right? These are very similar to each other. Right? Within experimental air, these are constant. Pressure times volume. That's what we're doing this one. Now you need to get the average of these. That's what P times V with a bar over it means the average of these values right here. So we just add all of that and divide by how many there? Yeah, it would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Five by nine. Eight, 
Seven point eight two nine. You sure? The average ought to be in the range of eight something. Did you divide by ten? We only have nine months. I know. Only divide by nine. That's what she divided by. Okay. Well, there's a mistake in the addition somewhere. Because this average should be in this range. Just about a Okay, you don't have Okay. Eight point seven zero eight. That's that's an illustration in does the answer make sense? In that case, the answer didn't make sense because the average of these can't be less than any than any one of them. So now we got the average. This takes that value and subtracts this from it. That gives you another value. Zero point zero six six. Zero point zero six six. Okay. <clears throat> and just do each one. If there's a negative, throw the negative out. Zero point zero five four. Zero five four. Okay. <clears throat> zero point two six five. Okay. Zero point one four four. Okay. Zero point zero eight seven. Okay. Zero point one one eight. Zero point two eight two. Zero point three zero nine. Zero point two zero one. Okay. These are what's called deviations. These are the deviations from the mean. And we want to get an average value of these. Is that what you got? That looks reasonable. Okay. Now for the percent error, we take the average of the deviations and divide it by the average of the values times 100.
0.9 or 1%. Okay, does that look reasonable? Yeah, that's what I got. Yeah, that looks good. If you can get less than 5% first time through, you've ever done this experiment, you're good. That's good data. Okay, um, was there anything else? That covers the chart. That, we're not doing this one. We don't describe. No, uh, we're only going to do one of them. Uh, you have questions to answer. Plots the graphs. Uh, uh, you got to draw a picture for number nine and describe it in words. I had a picture of what's happening inside the pressure vessel and inside the uh, syringe. And then the last one, you look up PETE on the internet and describe it. Answer the questions. Okay, that's it.